Welcome to Shovelware Diggers. Our dig team's currently excavating the Soft Key Shareware 2000 Hit Games 2CD Collection. You can find a link in the video description containing the entire directory structure of this archive. Here's what our diggers have for week 183. For more information on how to join the dig team, simply follow the Patreon link in the video description. Now without further ado, let's get started. First up, Paul Shear has dug up DOS games backslash arcade backslash angband. If this isn't what I think it is, I'm going to be very surprised. Um, we got a bunch of files here. Yeah, just looking at the files that are here, I've got a funny feeling this is exactly what I think it is. So let's go edit readme.pc. Okay, here's the executable version of Angman for the PC. It uses no 286, 386, or 486 code, so it should run on all PC systems. So yeah, Angband is actually, um, it's a dungeon crawl that's been around for a very long time. In fact, so long a time that there's still like newer and newer versions continuing to be made. <laughs> um, those text files aren't actually gonna do anything for us. So yeah, let's just run it because I know how to play this game. <laughs> and this is apparently version 2.4.frognose. <laughs> okay. And it looks like this one's from 1989, apparently by James Wilson. Although there's a whole bunch of other names here too, because I don't think, I'm not sure if Angbad started on the PC or not, but, oh. <laughs> Well, isn't that interesting? So, the game's complaining that someone's fiddled with the save file <laughs> and won't restore the save file. So, let's go delete the save file and try that again. Because, yeah, Angband has, um, has stuff in it to prevent... It, it's a permadeath game, so it has some protections in it to ensure that you're not sort of screwing with that. Um, let's play Dwarf. Um, I'll be male. My choices are warrior or priest. We'll go warrior. Um, okay. It's interesting to see that the character background was around even back then. Um, it's pretty good strength. I'm so keen on the other stats there. Um, control P goes to a previous roll. So, well, that's a definitely a better roll. Much higher strength. Um, uh, ooh, there we go. Not the best intelligence or wisdom, but as a warrior, it doesn't really matter. And yeah, escape to accept. So enter name, it'll be me. So yeah, I know how to play Angband. It's, but <laughs> admittedly, I've never played a version this old. So the keys might be a little different. I'm also not used to seeing it as text characters. I'm used to seeing it as graphic tiles. Okay, numeric keypad works. So we can go into the store here. Um, so this would be the temple. So that's kind of stuff that I don't really need to worry about too much. Apparently I've got 80 gold though. So this is the magic shop. Uh, nothing I can really afford. Uh, why is there a whole bunch of things coming after me? Do I have any weapons? Um, star for list. Yeah, let's get that broadsword on. Because I'm going to need to start attacking things. Oh, they're filthy street urchins. So yeah, these things are going to steal my money if I don't kill them all. Freaking street urchins. Okay, that was actually a really bad start. Normally you don't encounter a pocket of street urchins right off the bat, and as a result of that I've got no money now. What do I actually have in my inventory? At least it started me with some torches and food. Also, let's get that chainmail on. Chain mail on. So yeah, now I'm not going to really be able to buy much of anything, so let's just go down into the dungeon. <laughs> And apparently we have a scroll here, so let's read it. 
Oh, it's a scroll of blessing. Good for it. Um. Oh, it would actually help if I um <laughs> got a torch going. Yeah, I'm also used to having all kinds of sub windows so that I can m monitor my stuff without without any worries. But uh, is there literally nothing here? Okay. Looks like I'm going back up. <laughs> and then going back down. Oh, I got a small kobold. I found some copper. Clear icky thing. So yeah, Angband is a very, very um in-depth dungeon crawl. Okay, I think that's actually a an ore vein there. Which I don't have proper tunneling tools. Oh, there's no... Oh, it's a locked door. And I can't pick the lock on it. Well, so far it's giving me random dungeons, which don't really help much. So yeah, one of these days I'm going to cover Angband properly on Ancient DOS games, but until then, this serves as a bit of a teaser. I'm not sure, um... I'm not sure which version I would cover. Oh, rock lizards. Forgot those were even a thing. <laughs> Ooh, there's a bunch of stuff in here. Got a metallic blue potion. Got some copper. And a cyan potion. Um, let's see what the metallic blue po potion does. Oh, it's a potion of heroism. Okay. And what about the other one? Okay, so that showed the tried message there. So, because it's you're not necessarily going to... Oh, cool, I leveled up. Because you're not necessarily going to know what something does when you, when you use it, if you use something and there's no immediate effect as to what it did, you sim it simply says tried. To indicate you tried to use it, but you have no idea what it did. So yeah, this actually plays quite a lot like... Um, Quite a lot like modern Angband, with the exception that this is definitely a lot more um, hands-on. Like, when I hit a closed door here, I have to explicitly say to open it. Whereas in modern Angband, you just walk through the door and it automatically opens. Funny thing is, is that the dungeon generation even has a lot of similarities to it. Because one of the things that you often see in an Angband dungeon are these sort of like intersect these tiny little rooms that have doors on multiple corner multiple sides and searching didn't help there i wanted to see if maybe there was another door on the upper side there the only trick with angband is that it gets hard like really hard <laughs> The whole, the whole notion is, is that the further you get into this game, the much more powerful the stuff becomes. But at the same time, enemies also become equally more powerful. So it's like, you start off weak, but eventually you get stronger, but then the enemies also get stronger, and if you're not able to keep up with them, you're just gonna die fast. So yeah, Angben is... Even though it looks like it, things are going nice and smoothly to start here. <laughs> yeah, if I kept playing this past like level, past like the fifth or sixth dungeon level, things would get insane. Yeah, I just got a message there. Is there a way to repeat messages? Um, previous message review, control P. Oh, it does actually have feelings. Okay. So yeah, if you don't have something identified, after a while your character might just give you a feeling about an item. So in this case it's saying the, the leather gloves that you're carrying are average. And that just sort of means that it's not going to have any like curses or enchantments or anything. But then you can also get, um, that's weird how the enter key keeps give, giving like the tunnel command. But then you can also sometimes get feelings that indicate it's cursed or that it's good or that it's like really good or exceptional because you can have like hidden traits on items and everything. This game gets pretty complex. But yeah, one of these days I'll cover Angband properly, but for now I think I'm just gonna call it here. If you guys want to check out Angband yourself, there's like, there's downloads of it all over the internet. And there's also an official website, 
I don't know it offhand because I haven't been there in ages. And you're gonna find that modern versions have like proper graphical tiles. You can keep multiple windows open at a time to have all of your information like right there in front of you. Modern Angband is just so much more convenient to play. But it's not any easier, so fair warning. Next up, we have a very quick team dig from Christopher Groff and Michael Madsen. Wind games backslash miscellaneous backslash lotto luck. I've got a funny feeling this is going to be something related to lottery stuff. Specifically, well, actually, it's, let's see it here. Lotto luck by Ben Saladino. I think that's right. Uh, simply choose the pick button and lotto luck will display six unique numbers from one to 50. If they feel right to you, use them. That's literally all it does. Oh, it does have different ranges, though. Um, what's the text file say? A lot of luck is freeware. However, you hit the jackpot, I'll gladly accept a donation. Uh, of course you will. And the guy's in Texas. So, yeah, I think all this is... Of course, it has a resizable border when it doesn't need it. All this is is a tiny little program that um, just generates numbers yeah there you go <laughs> all it does is generate lottery numbers for you um it is good that it has a custom range setting but you'd kind of also need to make sure to have it so that it could select duplicates in case you're playing a lottery that does that but other than that uh yeah that's <laughs> that's all this thing does it picks random lot lottery numbers Okie dokie then. Next up, Christopher Groff has dug up win games backslash puzzle 3 backslash HJMM1. I don't have a clue what this is going to be. HJMM. Well, we got a bunch of wave files, so that means there's going to be some sound effects. Got some bitmaps. Um, any kind of text file or something? We got manual.text and manual.write. Oh, look, look up the right file. Hangman Jr. Test Drive. Um, well, that explains the HJ, but TD for MM? That doesn't make any sense. Um, and apparently this was written by an Alston Software Labs. So, manual installation details. Let's see. Hangman Jr. is a spelling game for children ranging 5 to 12 years old. Features the ability to present a picture and a sound to give the child a hint rather than a sentence, which may be confusing for younger children. Actually, hang on a second here. It says, unlike conventional Hangman-styled spelling games, there's no penalty for not getting a letter correct. Indeed, there's no negative reinforcement at all in this game, so there's no undue pressure for your child to get it right. Um... There's, I don't, I think we've got a little miscommunication here. The idea of negative reinforcement is if you tell someone, oh, you suck, or nope, that's not right, you gotta do better than that. Like, the idea is you want, to, the idea between negative reinforcement and positive reinforcement is a difference between how you respond to when something is wrong. But this is basically saying that if you get it wrong, the game just sort of continues as if they didn't get it wrong. Which is not the same thing as, <laughs> that's, that's not no negative reinforcement. That's no failing. Like, you can still have someone get something wrong and then just not make a big deal of it. And this is apparently only shareware, but I can't find any, um, information on the price of the program here. Unless there's like a, an ordering document, document or something. I don't see an order info document. Might be in the program itself. Welcome well, anyways. Hey, okay, so apparently we got some voice clips. Um, don't have an unnecessary resizable border. No maximize button. Okay, so we got that much right at least. So apparently we have sound effects we can turn on. Might as well have them all on. Um, there's the order info. Apparently this is twenty four ninety five U.S. dollars. So this better work really well. <laughs> Um, edit? Apparently it has a sample thing here. Oh. Oh, no, that's interesting. You can actually, um, create your own sort of database here. And then have different bitmaps and WAV files associated with that. 
Well, that's kind of nice. So you can actually add to it yourself. So open. So we open the sample thing. Okay, so you clearly got a witch there. Oh, that, um, this just changes what's up. And we hit this. How? Okay. How? Which? So it's just flat out saying what the image is. Rhino. So really, you're just trying to pick the right letters for what's on screen. If you pick a wrong one, it flies into the trash. So it's not really a hangman game. Uh, okay. We get a little animation for clearing it. Yeah, so basically all it is is you see the image, and you put in the correct letters, and we get <laughs> very strange animations for succeeding. Like, this is like a bungee jumping elephant. Does that even work? <laughs> So here's the thing, when a child is faced with a program of this nature with all kinds of buttons around here, they're going to want to press the buttons, right? So this button here changes what's up. This button here just cycles through the pictures. And then this button Tiger. here plays the sound effect or the sound cue. Like, I mean, this isn't really sort of teaching anything because the user interface makes it too easy to not play the game. <laughs> And then at the same time, when you do decide to start clicking stuff up here, you're not really learning anything if all you do is just click everything until you win. So, I don't really know how educational this program's going to be for a young child. Like, they might get some entertainment out of it, but they're going to run through everything in here pretty quickly. And also the, guy, the author was saying ages 5 to 12. This kind of content is probably going to be more like 5 to 9, not 5 to 12. So, yeah, I can't see this being worth $25. Like, maybe if it included, like, a whole lot of other stuff with it, but... Well, I guess there is the fact that it does have the ability to edit the files and add your own stuff, but, like, how many people would even have the capacity to do this? Like, what are you going to do, draw up a drop a quick little sketch in MS Paint and then just record yourself like shouting into some really cheap microphone or something if you even have such a device like yeah this is this would be a hard program to really make use of and our last dig for today from Michael Madsen is win games backslash arcade 2 backslash B underscore arrow I'm going to guess the B stands for bow, in which case bow and arrow. But let's see what we got. Um, what? <laughs> Readme.wnt? That's not a proper file form. Is that supposed to be WRI or something? But, what? <laughs> okay. Well, anyways, bow and arrow, copyright 92, John D. Troya? John D. Troya? Something like that. Um, shareware, and I find it to be worth value, then a contribution of $5, or $12 to receive the unabridged bow and arrow, which includes extensive online help and tints, more levels of play, including a duel with the Black Archer, and sound support. Interesting. So apparently we're not going to have sound effects in this version. It's $5 normally to register, but if you want the sound and the extra features, you need to register for $12. Okay. Uh-oh. When it says Windows 3.0 or above, that can be worrisome. But let's see what we got. So, bow and arrow. Version 1.0... Wait, this is the abridged version? But then... Oh, abridged... Okay, okay, unabridged and abridged. Yeah, okay, I get it now. Okay, so... Got a little scroll here. Um, I found it interesting that it auto-maximized. And that we can't actually change the size of the window. That's kind of weird. Um, playing field size. Oh. Okay. 
And it won't let me select the 800 by 600 now. What? <laughs> it defaulted to 800 by 600 and now it won't let me select it. Well, here's gotta go back in. No! What? Oh wait, default. Okay, default just full screens it. <laughs> okay. That's bizarre. Well, I guess 800 by 600 probably needs the screen to be bigger than 800 by 600 and default just maximizes. Anyway, what's the quick help say? I'm getting things a little backwards here. So load arrow, right mouse button, draw bow, hold left mouse button, shoot arrow, release left mouse button, and to walk, you just move the mouse cursor up or down while holding the left button down. Okay, so a little weird, but let's see if we can make this work. Okay, this is something I've never really understood. Bow and arrows, like archery in its entirety, has existed for far longer than balloons. So why is it in all of these archery type games, you're always aiming at balloons? Like, that almost doesn't make any sense, because obviously they would have target practiced with other things before balloons were invented. But anyways, we journey begins on the target range, target launches, release balloons up range, and we gotta shoot them all. Okie dokie. So apparently I can move around like this. Wait, I wasn't pushing the right mouse button, so why did... It... Also, another thing I'm noticing here is it says press spacebar to reactivate menu. That's very weird that it would, like, completely eliminate the menu from existence. Okay, so yeah, it seems that all you do... The right mouse button's sole purpose is to simply get an arrow ready. And then you hold the left mouse button down, and then you shoot. And then there you go. So now it says this is level one target practice. I have to wonder, like... Oh, that's my arrow count at the side there. Okay. Well, that was a total miss. So yeah, it's basically just sort of a timing game. Although, it's a little tricky to get this timing right. There we go. So I move on to the next level then. Nice shooting. Only way to become a great archer is to practice. After all, practice makes perfect. Now it gets a little tougher. Only shoot the red balloons. Uh... Okay. <laughs> So because the yellow balloons are moving so much faster, sooner or later this is going to actually get really, um, really tricky to time properly. So how much was this program again? $5 or $12 for the quote-unquote unabridged version? Uh, I guess that's not a bad price for something like this. Although I'm kind of already getting a little bored. But then I was never actually that, um, that fond of these kinds of sort of timing games with stuff moving in this ma manner. I mean, every time this style of gameplay shows up in anything, I just kind of get a... Whoops. Uh... Oh, yeah, it st keeps going anyways. Okay, so... I don't know what the penalty was there. Unless maybe I lose an arrow for that or something, or lose points. But yeah, whenever it comes to this si style of sort of aiming game, I just don't like this kind of thing. If it shows up as like a mini game in anything, or but yeah, I guess if this sort of thing appeals to you, then it's not not expensive for what it is. It, it maximized properly. It's got a, some little images here and everything. Well, like, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just definitely not worth more than the few bucks the guy's asking for it. <laughs>